That right there takes the day one lead. Big Silly! New leaders from Jury University. Way to go, there's your first place team. What's up everybody, welcome back into the studio here. We're back in the office from the 2022 Boat U.S. Collegiate Bass Fishing Championship presented by Bass Pro Shops. Going to be joined today by the winners of that event, Briar Chambers and Clint Blackwood from Wallace State, weighing in a two-day total of 46.91 pounds to take home first place. Clint, let's jump right into it, man. We're a week removed from it, just a week ago today. Y'all are holding up the trophy there in Florence, Alabama. What is it like? Has it set in yet to know that y'all won a national championship event at one of the most prestigious college bass fishing tournaments out there? Man, it is awesome. Uh, to know we was able to come out to this event and to compete in it and even win it, it's just, it's an incredible, incredible experience. Um, very thankful for you guys and all the sponsors of this tournament for putting it on. Y'all ran it awesome. This is one of my favorite tournaments I've ever fished. To win this event is just, it's nearly breathtaking. Like, it's, I can't put it into words. It, it hasn't sunk in yet. I still wake up and I'm like, oh man, that happened, you know? That's awesome. That's the type of reaction that comes from winning a big event like this, Briar. I'm going to talk about a couple of quick items here, and we'll talk about them later in more detail, but I want to get the same reaction from you here in just a moment. Taking a look at what y'all took home, $5,000 for first place. Clint earns Garmin Tournament rewards for having Garmin Electronics on his boat and being the highest finishing team, and then yourself catching Big Bass, taking home a gift certificate for a new power pole. Tell me, taking home all that stuff that y'all did by winning that event, Man, that's just an awesome haul. No entry fee tournament to show up and win and leave with that. It's got to be pretty cool. Man, there's, like Clint said, there is no words to describe how awesome it was. I mean, we took home a lot of hardware, but, I mean, the fish done everything for us. So, I mean, they was there, and we didn't really know what was there when we got there, so. I mean, it just worked out in our favor, and it was just one of them days it was meant to be for us. Let's go ahead and get into the specifics now of how y'all caught your fish. The Elite Series is there this week. Been watching some of that live coverage and getting to see out on the water what those guys are doing. There's quite a few teams focusing, or quite a few anglers focusing down around the Pickwick Dam. Of my understanding, that's about where y'all were in the section of the lake catching your fish. So, Clint, first off, just talk about the section of the lake that y'all focused on to sack up the winning fish. Man, it was a 45-minute run one way. We ran, we was looking at concrete all day long at the Pickwick Dam. Uh, starting our morning off, day one, we kind of come to a mutual agreement that we was just going to run, start running down the lake, and the first school we could get on, we was going to fish. Our first two holes, we had they had boats on them. We stopped on hole number three. We scanned over those fish, and they were not set up right. And our next two schools had boats on them. So we were, you know, by the time we found something that we knew there were bass there, we was at the dam. We were maybe a quarter mile from it. You know, we were, you know, we was all the way on the other end. We went as far as we could. Briar, let's talk about how the specific spot set up or what the type of structure was you y'all were looking at. In years past, we've seen anglers fish up shallow some. We've seen some of the grass flats in that mid-lake section pan out well. Then obviously secondary areas back into creeks and then out into the main river ledges. I know that some of our guys said it's camera crew and things as they were running around the lake that years past where we've seen a lot of teams piled up they just weren't there this year what did you find what was it was it a main river ledge something kind of sneaky where a secondary creek intersected what was the makeup of the exact spot y'all were fishing well there was a the main river ledge was about 50 yard 50 60 yards from us and then the, there was a creek channel that flowed right beside it there was another bar between us and the main river the way the best I could think of it is the cur current was rolling over the top bar, over the outer bar, and then hitting directly on top of this one, and there was a current break on top of it, which it had a bunch of rocks on. You really couldn't see the fish on it, and I really didn't know how many was there when we first found it. 
at, like when I counted, I, we counted seven on top of it, but I'm sure there was more than seven there on Sunday when we found it. And we didn't cast that. I was like, well, this ain't worth casting at. Uh, just keep on going. And we kept scanning. We found another school of about 100, about 200 yards from there. And we threw at them, caught a couple of fish out of them, just went on and scanned. And we come back the next day, back down there to keep looking. Well, about the end of the day, I was like, well, let's go look at that school one more time. Come back, there were several more on it than the first time. And I was like, okay, that's kind of interesting. Went on, didn't pay no more attention to it. And scanned around, checked, found a few more schools, and then it was like it we found, started finding a lot of schools on like secondary stuff in creeks, not necessarily in the, like in the creek channels on the main river, started finding bigger schools there. So we found like a little over 20 schools that was off of secondary points inside of a creek channel. And I mean, they all set up the same way. I just think the only reason that they was, so many fish coming there every day. I mean, I think it was just a fresh school starting to show up, and that was the only reason we was able to catch them because none of the other schools that we got on in practice would bite like that school would. But we really didn't know how they was going to bite when we got there. We just knew there was fish there, and we was hoping to catch a limit, then try to cull up from there. Let's talk specifics about what y'all were throwing at those fish now as you described the way that they were biting. Clint, tell us. Were you throwing moving baits? Were you throwing finesse baits? Did you mix it up throughout the day as the fish moods changed? Or if I remember right, as Briar was explaining it on the stage, you just about could have thrown anything out there and they were going to bite. Man, it was a typical ledge ledge pattern. You know, we started off firing the school up first thing in the morning, day two, with a 10XD. And it was just cast after cast. We were catching fish on that 10XD. And Briar was backing it up getting a couple bites here and there on day two with a hair jig um once that we fired that school up once they died back down we knew it was time to pick up a worm and a jig and we we was swapping back and forth between that worm and jig and every now and then i'd pick up a swim bait well we finally got them to fire up again a second time on day two with that swim bait and it was just you know throw anything in there he's gonna get bit once you it they were real finicky about when they'd slow back down get in that lull about what they'd bite but as soon as you got a bite all you had to do is keep a bait in the water and you you'd stay bit as far as day one goes we pulled up on that school and briar caught one within the first one to three casts i can't remember if it was first it it was the first cast he had caught a four and a quarter we stuck it in the box. He fires right back in there, catches the eight pounder. We stick it in the box. He fires again, and I'm throwing a worm. I'm, I'm throwing crankbait, swim bait. I'm throwing all kinds of different baits, and he's throwing that hair jig. And he throws back on the third cast and catches a five and a half. And in the first three casts of the day, we put sixteen pound in the box, and we, you know, it's just kind of one of them things where you can step back and just get, you can breathe. Because the first few hours of the tournament, you know, it's always, you're rushing. You're like, oh, I need a limit, and we need a kicker fish. You know, that's always the mindset for me and Briar when we're fishing is need a limit, need a kicker fish right now. And to have gotten three very good fish on the first three casts, we were, we were able to breathe a little bit. That school died off almost immediately, and I was able to stick, stick our limit on a swim bait uh we stoned a little five inch spark shad and i was able to stick our limit off of that school and then they completely shut down they all pulled off in a ditch and they just went locked off and that was the only time we got them fired day one and we had seen where one of our schools across the lake all the boat we there was i think five boats sitting on it when we come by so we, we put all our rods down we strapped them down put it on plane and we stopped on that school, made a couple of casts, and again, I, I was able to fire them up with that 10XD, just burning it through there, getting a good reaction bite. And then all them fish, they'd go from sucked up on the bottom, and they'd all pick up, and they'd go to feeding. 
So we fired that school up, caught several shorts, and finally made a call. We called a 263 for a 277, just a real small, you know, by ounces call. And right then and there, we both kind of decided, let's put our rods down, let's go to the graphs, and let's just see what all schools that we found are, you know, being left alone. Let's see if, if we can't get on this starting school, let's see what other schools we can get on tomorrow just for plan B. You know, we 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 quit fishing after that. We just we went back to practicing, you know, looking for new, fresh schools, looking for schools that had grown. And we ended up making our way back down to Natchez Trace, finding a school in 10 to 12 foot of water on like a three foot contour change. And when we had found, we again, that was a school we found on Sunday. And when we had scanned back over it on Thursday, it went from half a dozen fish to 20 or 30 fish. So we put another mark on it where they were set up because they had moved. And we went on in to weigh in. And coming back, we caught every fish we weighed in day two off of that first school down there at the dam was getting close to weigh-in time. We wasn't sure what, we knew the wind was up. We wasn't sure what the weather was going to be like at McFarland. So we're headed in early. We decided we'll stop back on that Natchez Trace School again and just see what's there. Because this is a school that, again, we had made a few casts on and caught a few fish out of on Sunday. And I fire in there with that five-inch spark shad. First cast, I catch a three-and-a-half, and he's not going to help us. And we commenced to catching a dozen fish in less than 20 minutes, or over a dozen fish, and all of them three and a half to four pounds and never made a call. And we were like, dang, because at the time, we we were still under the impression that, man, we need a five and a half to six pound bite, you know, to make sure we seal the deal on this, because we were unsure if we was going to win or not. So... We're, we pull up within less than 20 minutes, catch over a dozen fish and never caught one under three pounds. And we just kind of shook it off and we we're like, yeah, okay, I guess it's time to go weigh in. Cause we, you know, that was about all the time we had to fish and we sat down, cameraman puts all this stuff up and he, he looks at us and goes, really guys? Cause we were, you know, we we're just, okay, let's go. And I look up at him and he said, boys, y'all just caught 17 and a half pounds, never batted an eyelash, put your rods down and was ready to go. And I was like, yeah, I guess you're right. And, uh, you know, on any other day to pull up and catch 17 pounds in 15 minutes, you know, that's, we're ecstatic about it. But we were just, again, fired that school up and it was every time you could make a cast, you were catching a fish. So we weren't really paying attention as to the caliber of fish we were catching so we were you know just so in the moment we need that big bite we need that big bite and we went in and up until we you know up until logan and tucker weighed in we were still unsure if, if we was going to win or not we're talking with Briar Chambers and Clint Blackwood, winners of the 2022 Boat U.S. Collegiate Bass Fishing Championship presented by Bass Pro Shops. Ended up having just enough weight. I believe they edged out Auburn, as they were mentioning there, by just a couple pounds. Two-day total of 46.91, weighed in 23.66 on the first day of competition and 23.25 there on day two to secure the victory. Briar, let's talk about some of the contingencies and different prize bonuses that y'all got. You yourself, that eight plus pounder you caught on day one, that earned you a power pole gift certificate for a free power pole as the overall big bass of the tournament. Talk a little bit about that and how awesome it is to be able to earn that valuable prize for claiming big bass honors there at the championship. Uh, best way best way I can put it is there there is no words for how awesome it is. To catch a fish that big i mean it's a rarity on i mean they live in the tva but catching them is catching them in june is a whole different story over over seven pounds they're not easy to catch i i, I pretty much live on the tva i live 20 minutes from gunnersville i fish out there nearly every day that's just pretty much my home lake 
between there and Smith, and I, I'm not the biggest fan of Smith. I mean, I'd rather go somewhere that I can pattern fish instead of having to go guessing every time if I'm going to go out there and catch one or not. Uh, the power pole, I mean, power pole is awesome. I mean, you know, there ain't many tournaments out there that gives you the contingencies that y'all do that allows us to win more than just a check and a truck and a play. I mean, that's pretty awesome in my, my opinion. Let's talk some more about those bonuses that were built in. Clint, yourself, Garmin Tournament Rewards, another $500 for running Garmin Electronics. Talk a little bit about winning that contingency and what the Garmin did for y'all out there. As we know that a lake like Pickwick, the time of year that we're there, electronics are everything out there fishing those ledges. Right. Uh, to win the $500 uh, Garmin check, that was, you know, it was just the icing on the cake kind of a deal. And I'm so thankful for Garmin for sponsoring that. And uh, as far as using the Garmin in the tournament, we weren't watching our fish hit our baits, you know, as most times, you know, when you're using the Garmin, you see the fish, you make the cast, watch your bait, and watch your fish hit it. This was more of a deal where these fish were moving so much when they were in their lull, you know, when the fish were on their downtime. We could watch them transition. There was about three different lineups that we were using on our main spot. And we could watch them move. And once they'd set up, we knew about the general area to cast because we couldn't couldn't watch our baits because of all the current we'd have to throw up current from them and drift our baits back through them so we just knew they were set up here you know we used it to, to to gauge where our fish was and we was able to watch those fish watch their behavior and know just about know when we was going to get bit and when we weren't uh, it definitely made it a whole lot easier to catch these fish and to know what they were doing because with ledge fish it's all about how they behave and to know what they're doing and how they're reacting is almost everything for this uh, again the contingencies is that y'all put on it's awesome we appreciate everything that was put forth you know all of our sponsors and the people who sponsored this event are just they're awesome you know, I, all hats off to them. You bet, man. That's what makes it all happen. It takes a lot of support, a lot of effort from a lot of people, a lot of companies to make everything come together. And the championship for us is the end of the season. It's what we work for all year long to get there. And now we're getting ready for another new season. But with that, we're going to put a bow on the 2022 Boat U.S. Collegiate Bass Fishing Championship presented by Bass Pro Shops as Briar Chambers and Clinton Blackwood from Wallace State, winners of the 2022 championship there at Pickwick Lake in Florence, Alabama. Guys, thanks for taking the time to join us on the phone today. Hope to see you guys out at another tournament here soon. We'll try to be there. Yes, sir. Fishing is all about connecting with nature. Then grabbing nature by the lip and holding it up for a picture. To fishermen and other liars, the time you spent on the docks banks, the boats, the lines you cast, and the hooks you set. These moments you share with the people you love, the fish you never forget, and the tales that get taller with every retelling. Make memories that'll last a lifetime with Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here.